Lenya. Um, I have a, a bit of a concern, and I do apologize because I'm not a scientist and I'm, I don't have any official background in security, but um, with the RFID human implant chip being approved by the FDA, it seems that the next logical integration for information inside of our bodies, especially as it goes into nanotechnology, is the integration of that with virtual reality contact lenses or full immersion. This will take people into, it will make it easier for people to go into virtual worlds. So is there anything being addressed uh, about cyber terrorism in the virtual world hacking people? I mean, how, how do I know that a cyber avatar won't be trying to hack that device that's inside of my body? Before you go there, I just want to make one more point for Linda Van. She has a wonderful novel, only two years old now, called Rainbow Van, which deals with that exact, uh, that exact thing. That it comes back to John Bingy. 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 Okay. I think that's a great question, and I think as these various technologies, I want to think, as these various technologies grow, that is where we're going to see a lot of the, the growth of the threat. I was interviewed recently, and somebody asked me, which of the future security threats are you most concerned about? And I actually talked about biology as an example, because as we continue to integrate information technology with biology, um, we're creating whole new series of threat opportunities uh, for people. And so what is the consequence of having your cochlear implant, your diabetic pump, your pacemaker, uh, your neurocortic stimulator attached to the internet? And there are currently 60,000 implantable medical devices in the United States that connect to the internet. So I think that's a great question. And to your point of the merging of sort of real reality and virtual reality, we're already seeing hybrid realities and augmented realities coming together. Things in virtual spaces coming into the real world, things in the real world going into virtual spaces. So it will be much more fluid. And as some of our faculty on biotechnology would say, the developments in thin biosynthetic biology and genomics are just at the very beginning. Right now, we're just understanding how to decode the genome, and we're understanding how to read it, but we don't really have comprehension. Once we get comprehension, the next step will be to write, right, synthetic biology, and to write the human genome. And the potential threats from that into all mammals, flora and flora on the planet, are completely unexplored. So, great question. I want to make it concrete. In the spring water, it's a cool for data summit and that. In the spring water, we focused on insurance of the future of insurance. And it's actually <coughs> really interesting how this spectrum of threat, it's really a spectrum of threat. And uh, if you think about the data people create, share, whether it's true or false data, how that can impact whether they can get insured or not. So that is an extremely rich area where we can invent the future now, which is not there because we now live in a much, much more data rich world. And the insurance, I think, is one of the more benign ends of the spectrum, which is not a, as far out of the future as you are, but it's very real that insurance companies think should they look at, uh, you know, your friend's behavior, your photos where you text, whether it's you or not, with your behavior, to affect whether it's insure you or not. Let me go to this one. Mike was first, but we go first. Well, thank you.